Hey guys, in this video I'd like to discuss Gibbs free energy and how it relates to chemical equilibrium. So the first thing I'd like to mention is that you'll see delta G written in a couple different forms. Uh, this one right here, delta G with the little degree symbol up at the top, this denotes the delta G4 reaction at standard state and at equilibrium. So in other words, if you have a gas, it'll be at one bar pressure for standard state. If you have a solution, it'll be at one molal concentration for standard state. And again, this describes a reaction at its equilibrium at a given temperature. So I've written up here, delta G with the degree symbol is fixed for a given temperature. This delta G over here, on the other hand, without the degree symbol, is more flexible. It describes a reaction not necessarily at standard state and not necessarily at equilibrium. So delta G changes based on the amount of products and reactants, so that implies that we can be shifted away from equilibrium. So this delta G, on the whole, is more flexible than this delta G. So there are three cases that you should know for this flexible delta G here. It can be positive, negative, or zero. So if it's positive, we know it's greater than zero. And what this actually means is that your chemical reaction has gone past its equilibrium and it will actually go backwards until delta G equals zero. See, nature always wants to use up all of its free energy and it wants delta G to be at zero. So when we say delta G is greater than zero, what that actually means is that Q is greater than K. So just a quick reminder on Q and K here. So K is the equilibrium constant for a given chemical reaction. And I've got a sample chemical reaction right here. A plus B goes to C plus D, and I want you to use this to think about this. So the K for this reaction would look like this. We would have the products in the numerator and the reactants in the denominator. And for K, this is an equilibrium constant. This is at equilibrium. So these would all be equilibrium concentrations. In other words, they're the concentrations of A, B, C, and D at equilibrium. Q, on the other hand, notice how I've left off this subscript EQ on each of the concentrations. This implies that Q is not necessarily at equilibrium. So this might sound a little familiar and you can kind of draw the analogy that K is to this delta G with the degree symbol as Q is to this more flexible delta G. So K is at equilibrium. This delta G describes the delta G of something at equilibrium. While Q is not necessarily at equilibrium, and neither is this more flexible delta G here. So you can kind of think about them as analogous to one another. So back to these states here, delta G greater than zero. Again, this means the reaction has gone past its equilibrium and Q is greater than K. So if Q is greater than K, that means this numerator up here must have gotten bigger than this numerator or this denominator has gotten smaller than this denominator. In other words, we've made too many products. We've converted too many reactants into products for this given equilibrium. And therefore, the forward reaction is no longer spontaneous. The reverse reaction is now spontaneous in this case. Delta G less than zero, this is the opposite. This means Q is less than K. So the, this numerator here must have gotten smaller than this numerator. Or this denominator here has gotten bigger than this denominator. In other words, in this case, we have too many reactants. We haven't converted enough reactants into products. And therefore, the reaction has not yet reached its equilibrium and it'll go forwards to make more products. And it'll go forwards until delta G is equal to zero. So you can kind of see here that delta G less than zero, we know that means the reaction is spontaneous. That's why it'll be spontaneous as written. It'll go forward in the spontaneous direction. The reverse direction will be non-spontaneous. So the third case is when delta G is equal to zero. This is when the reaction is at equilibrium and it will not shift forwards or backwards. In other words, Q is equal to K. Okay, so what I've written on the board here are some of the practical application equations for the information that I just taught. So you can see I've got written up here, the standard state at equilibrium delta G is equal to negative R, which is the gas constant, times temperature in Kelvin, times the natural logarithm of the equilibrium constant. Notice how this allows you to convert between the equilibrium constant 
and delta G with the degree symbol. So this tells you that the delta G at the standard state at equilibrium with this little degree symbol corresponds to a reaction at equilibrium. Now I incorporated the more flexible delta G here, not necessarily at standard state or equilibrium, into another important equation. And this is a good equation to know. It tells you that delta G, the more flexible one, is equal to the standard state delta G plus RT ln of Q. So again, gas constant times temperature in Kelvin times the natural log of Q for the reaction. And if we substitute in what we know delta G at standard state is equal to for this thing right here, if we just substitute this in, then we can make a more simple equation for delta G because we know the property of logarithms allows us to turn this into a logarithmic fraction. And so we know that delta G, the more flexible one, is equal to RT ln of the ratio of Q to K. Okay, so these are two important equations to know that will help you solve problems. Okay, so let's see those equations in action. So I've got a problem written up on the board here, and I've already got all the work written out, so I'm gonna walk you through this carefully. I've got a reaction here, 3O2 gas goes to 2O3 gas. And I'm saying at a temperature of 298 Kelvin, the delta G at standard state, and remember this means we're at equilibrium, is positive 163.2 kilojoules per mole. So from that, what is KEQ, or the equilibrium constant? So we know that we can use this equation to convert between delta G at the standard state and the equilibrium constant, KEQ. So that's all we do here. We simply plug in all the variables and solve for KEQ. So remember here, R is the gas constant, and I've written that value up here, and importantly, the units are in joules per mole times Kelvin. So that means our delta G here has to be in joules. They gave it to us in kilojoules, so to change it to joules, I multiplied it by 1,000. So I said 163,200 joules per mole for my delta G is equal to negative 8.3145 for my gas constant times 298 Kelvin, times the natural log of KEQ. So I simply divided both sides by these terms to cancel them out, and I ended up with, when I reversed it around, natural log of KEQ equals negative 65.87. I simply uh, took the base of E of both sides, E to this, E to this, that cancels out the natural log, and I was left with KEQ equals 2.47 times 10 to the negative 29. So you can see here how we can go between delta G at the standard state and KEQ. Okay, so now let's make the problem a little more interesting. So I've got the same reaction written up here and the same temperature, but now instead of being at equilibrium with the delta G with the little degree symbol, I'm gonna say, we are not at equilibrium, and in particular, we have a reactant amount of 0.2 atmospheres and a product amount of 0.0015 atmospheres. Remember, these are in units of pressure for gases. So now I wanna know what is the delta G without that degree symbol? In other words, what is this flexible delta G that changes as we shift away from equilibrium? And remember, we know this equation here, delta G, the flexible one equals the fixed one at standard state plus RT ln of Q. And we also know this one here. And in this case, I actually used this one to solve the problem, but I just want you to know that you could have used this one as well. So obviously we're solving for delta G, so that's gonna remain a variable. We have R, that's a gas constant, and then the temperature was given. So now all we need is ln of Q over K. Well, we just solved for K, right? So we already have that in the denominator here. Now all we need is Q. And we know Q is gonna be equal to the concentration or pressure, in this case, of our products, which were O3 raised to the second power because of this coefficient here, over the pressure of our reactants, O2, raised to the third power because of this coefficient here. And when we plug in our pressures, we get a Q of 0.00028. So I went ahead and plugged that in for Q. And once you have a calculator, this is just uh, simple calculations that you can do. And you get delta G equals 1.43 times 10 to the five. And remember, this is in joules per mole because we used our 
uh, gas constant in joules per mole times Kelvin. So in order to change this to kilojoules, I just divided by a thousand and I ended up with positive 143 kilojoules per mole. So remember before we were at 163.2 kilojoules per mole at standard state and at equilibrium. But now when we perturb the reaction a little bit by changing the reactant and product pressures, we have a different delta G, right? So I just want to point out here that at equilibrium, the delta G with the degree symbol, the standard state delta G is 163.2 kilojoules per mole. And at equilibrium, this flexible delta G would actually have just been zero. We know that at equilibrium, Q is equal to K and delta G without the degree symbol is zero. And actually, even in this case, when we perturb the reaction and start it out like this, it's still going to reach equilibrium and thus the delta G uh, with the degree symbol is still going to be this, even in this case. So I hope this helped you guys out and made some sense. If you have any questions or you're interested in tutoring, please contact me at facebook.com slash tutoring and I'll see you guys in the next video.